Hello, and welcome to another edition of Math. I'll be your host, Mr. Graves, and today we're going to be working through uh, using exponential functions, um, particularly looking at parent, gra parent graphs as well as transformations. Um, this is so that we'll be able to identify important information in an exponential function. <clears throat> and you know you'll be able to do it when you can describe transformations and solve problems. Um, so let's jump in and talk about what a parent function is. So a parent function is the simplest function of a family of functions that preserves the definition or shape of the entire family. So there are many different kinds of functions, such as linear, um, which we've been seeing as y equals mx plus b. They make a line. There's quadratic, which make parabolas, and I won't go into all of these, but exponential, logarithmic, absolute values, and rationals. So each of these are a kind of like equation um, with input, output values, and when we graph these functions, they have certain looks to them. They have certain shapes. So we are going to be working with exponential func functions, which has, as you see below in the graph, this shape, uh, where, the, where there is an increase or decrease, <clears throat> depending on what we're working with. So. Um, you're going to hear some vocabulary, and I'm just going to kind of talk about a couple things. All functions, um, for the most part, all functions have some kind of parent equation that we can tie them to. So for linear, we would use y equals x. For quadratic, we would say y equals x squared. Exponential, we typically use 2, uh, y equals 2 to the x. Um, and so on and so forth. So for what we're going to be doing, the parent equation uh, is y equals 2 to the x power. And you'll notice here on the table that then uh, different values that we could use for x, different inputs, will lead to different output values. And so the whole idea is that when we input a negative 2 for x, <clears throat> so in place of x here, we substitute with a negative 2. And then when we solve that, we get 1 over 4. If we substitute a negative 1 in for x, we solve that expression, we are left with 1 half. Okay, 2 to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Uh, 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, and this could continue. The more we continue this way, we would get larger and larger numbers. We would get to the fourth power, to the fifth power, so on. Um, our numbers would get larger. We could also go further with negative numbers, 2 to the negative third, 2 to the negative fourth, 2 to the negative fifth, and they are going to make smaller and smaller fractions. So they're going to continue to get uh, fractionally smaller. Think about how, uh, in terms of money, $1, this would be 50 cents a quarter, and it would continue to decrease in value. It will get smaller and smaller and smaller without ever reaching zero. It's still, it's, it'll just get closer and closer and closer to zero uh, without ever actually reaching it. So... Um, when we have a table, we can plot these things. So like negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, uh, 2, oh, I'm sorry, 1, 2, and then we have 2, 4, uh, 3, 8, and you can see that 4 would go to 16 on this graph. Um, so we could continue to work this out. Um, so th that's just kind of what it looks like. Okay? So that's the parent graph, and um, it's just kind of the most general, basic 
form of an exponential function. Now let's talk about transformations of parent functions. So here I have my parent function and down below, if you notice, I still have my parent function embedded here, but there's all kinds of extra stuff that's taking place. Actually, I shouldn't have circled that. So I have my parent function. I have this three, I have a negative, I have this negative four, and I have this negative five. And each of them do different things. So I'm gonna highlight some things here. Um, and this is the order in which we would describe this. So the first thing that we look to describe is if there is a left or right shift, and we can find that by looking for the opposite of the value that is with x. So it's gonna be grouped with x. So here, grouped with x, I have <clears throat> a negative four, and I said the opposite because a negative we would assume would go left, and a positive we would assume would go right. But for our first rule, it actually ends up being the opposite. So instead of going uh, left four, we would actually go right four. So when there's a right shift, it's gonna be negative, and for a left shift, it's gonna be a positive number. And you'll get to see this worked out a couple times, but the opposite of the value with x. So this x minus four is actually telling us that there's a shift to the right four. The next thing that we look for to describe is if there is a vertical reflection, that's a reflection over the x-axis, and we can tell that if our base, um, if our parent function is being multiplied by a negative. So I'm gonna show you in blue right here. Now I'm not including the three. The only thing I'm actually looking at is the negative out front. The three does something different. The negative though, reflects. So um, if we're looking at this parent function up here, a, a negative in front actually just reflects it so that it would kind of flip down this way. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about would be vertical stretching or shrinking. And there's some, some more to this rule than what is written here. Um, but what's important to know is that it is, if there is a number being multiplied, it means it's going to stretch or shrink. Any number greater than one is going to stretch our function out vertically. Any number greater than zero but less than one, so anything that's like a fraction or a decimal, is going to, um, any fraction that's actually less than one, right? So like three over two is still is a fraction, but it's greater than one, so it would be a stretch. But like two over three or one over four, anything that um, that is a fraction would actually shrink this down so that it would become kind of a, a shrunken version of itself versus a, uh, a larger number, a number larger than one, which would stretch this out. It might make it look, it's going to make it look bigger. Um, and then uh, the last thing that we talk about, step four here, is if it's going to move up or down, if there's a shift up or down, and we tell if there is a vertical shift by the number that is adding or subtracting at the end. If you plan on going into Algebra 2, you will work on this more. This is just kind of an intro to these concepts, okay? So there I have, uh, this is, and these are going to, these actually match up. So if it's negative, it goes down. If it's positive, it goes up. So the only rule that's really confusing because it, it seems kind of backwards is this first one. Um, so let's take a look at some practice equations or some practice ones. Um, and so we are going to list, remember we always start talking about left or right first, and some of these we won't use all the way. Um, so right here, is gonna describe this. So that's the first thing I look for. And then out front, and steps two and three are actually interchangeable. So 
uh, you can list them in either order. But I like to always look for uh, my flip or my um, my reflection before I look at my stretch. It's just personal. And then that's my stretch. And then uh, here we have, shouldn't take me that long to pick a color. <clears throat> Here, and I'm just going to color coordinate these first ones. So if this is on the following ones, if you're like a little bit lost, come back and look at this. So my negative 4 tells me I need to move right 4. So my whole parent function would shift right 4. My purple negative tells me there's going to be an x axis reflection that we reflect over the x axis. My three tells me there's a vertical stretch by three. And my green tells me that we're moving down five. So this is down, this is right. This is a stretch, and this is a flip. Okay, but we've got to say it in order. Now, sometimes you're not going to have everything. So in this one, I'm looking at left eight. I do not have a flip. There's no negative out front here. So there's no x-axis reflection. There is a stretch of six. And that's a vertical stretch. I should point that out. I apologize if you're writing this in real time. And then my last thing that's taking place here is the whole thing then shifts down one. Okay, a couple more examples. See how quick these are once you know what to look for. So we're looking at uh, right here, which is telling me I'm going to move right one. We do the opposite. So even though it's negative, we're going to do the opposite. This is telling me x-axis reflection. I'm just going to write reflect. reflect. Uh, my other class, I've shortened it and just done flip. but An x-axis reflection. There's no stretch of this on this one. There's no stretching or, sw or shrinking. And then this is telling you to move up three. So these things would literally take the parent graph and like it would move it, like it would move it right six. And then, so then it's, it's like over here and then it like would stretch or it would flip over and then it would move down, you know, four or whatever. So. It's just, it's how it would change it, okay? And then my last one here, um, I'm looking up here. That's telling me to go right five. So the whole thing would shift right five. There's a reflection over the x-axis. There's a stretch of five. And there's no left or right. So this is all, or I'm sorry, no up or down. Um, right, that's like plus zero. So there's, there's no change to our, um, if it's moving up or down, okay? So check this out. We can apply transformations to a parent graph of exponential functions um, by using a table of values. So it, we can also just use a table of values uh, here. Um, I just have my parent function, so this is my x. Uh, actually, I'm going to call this. I did that backwards. X and y. Okay, and actually, we do have this one up listed up here, um, and you may see it as a function of x which we've talked about before. These two terms are interchangeable. But this is really my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate. 
and then I'm going to plug it in for 2x. So instead of 2x, I'm going to say 2 to the negative second power. And as we've learned with negative powers, that means it's unhappy. It's in the wrong place, and so I need to move it to make it positive. So I, it's in the wrong place. It moves down. It becomes 2 to the positive second power, which is going to give me 1 over 4. Okay, to the negative first power, that's sitting over 1. Because it's the negative power, it means it's in the wrong place, so it's going to move down, and it's going to become 2 to the positive first, and I put 1 as a placeholder, and when I evaluate 2 to the first power, that's just 2, so that's 1 half. Uh, 2 to the 0 power, anything raised to the 0 power, uh, with the exception of 0, is going to give us 1. Okay, and then 2 to the first power, I don't have to really work that out, 2 to the second power, which is 4. So that's our parent function worked out, and these would be our, our x and y coordinates. So negative 2 and 1 fourth, 0, 1, 1, 2, so on, etc. Okay. Um... Let's see what happens if we apply it with a one-half. So uh, I have one-half, and that whole one-half is being raised to the negative second power. So remember our, our rules. This negative second is going to go to both terms, so it's going to be one to the negative second power over two to the negative second. And both of those are in the wrong place. So this guy's going to come up here. This guy's going to go down here. And then when I evaluate that, 2 to the second is 4, 1 to the second is 1, so I end up with a 4. So, um, sorry. Now I have 1 half, and that whole thing's being raised to the negative first power. What you'll notice about this. is it ends up, right, this guy needs to go up, this guy needs to come down, ends up really just flipping my, um, my fraction, and then I get 2 when I work all that out. Uh, 1 half raised to the 0 power, anything raised to the 0 power is just 1. 1 half raised to the first power, means 1 to the first over 2 to the first, and there's really nothing to work out there, so I just get 1 over 2. And then 1 half raised to the second power means 1 to the second over 2 to the second. 1 to the second power is 1, and 2 to the second power is 4, so there's my uh, x and y table, 4. Um, one half raised to the x power. So sometimes, so we have a parent graph, but sometimes we're given different values or we'll be working with different values to evaluate. And you can do that in a table, but we just follow order of operations. So this is, remember talking about our transformations, this is a vertical stretch of two. Um, but I'm just going to plug in uh all of my stuff and then evaluate. So I'm going to have two times three to the negative second power. Order of operations tells me I have to work out that power first, so I'm going to say two times. Uh, it's in the wrong place, so I'm going to give that one over three to the second power because it had to move. And then that's going to make two times one over nine. And that's really 2 over 1, right? And so when we multiply, I end up with 2 over 9. And that doesn't reduce. So for my next one, I'm doing 2 times 3 raised to the negative first power, which means 2 times 1 over 3 to the first power. I don't really need to work that out. It's I will, I, uh, I will just to follow my steps, so... 2 times 1 over 3, and that's going to give me 2 over 3. 
2 times 3 to the 0 power. Now this 0 power is only affecting the 3, so 3 to the 0 power is 1. So I still have 2, but that's 2 times 1, which will give me 2. 2 times 3 to the first power. 3 to the first power is 3, so I'm just doing 2 times 3, which makes 6. And then 2 times 3 to the second power, which means I'm doing 2 times 9, because that's 3 times 3, which is 18. Okay, so the whole idea is that we want you to be familiar with there are tables, and we can fill out those tables and then um, evaluate. And I'm using negative 2 through positive 2. Those are kind of our five typical numbers that we use in algebra. Um, but know that, I mean, you could, pick, you could pick any number and plug it in and get an output. Um, but these are usually the standard ones that we'll use. So this one I have 2 to the negative second power plus 4. So I've got to work that out to the negative second power. And we did do that um, up here, 2 to the negative second power, uh, which is, it means it's in the wrong place, so it needs to go down below. And then when I work that out, it gives me 1 over 4 plus 4. And think about like if I had, so one fourth is a quarter, so if I had a quarter plus four dollars, I have four dollars and a quarter. I have four dollars and 25 cents. So here I have two to the negative one plus four. When I work that out, I get one over two plus four, which makes four and a half. Two to the zero plus four. If I work out two to the zero power, that's one. And one plus four is five. Two to the first power plus four. Two to the first power is just going to give me two plus four, which is six. And then finally, 2 to the second power plus 4. 2 to the second power is 4 plus 4, which is 8. Okay, so that's the idea behind tables. So at the end of this lesson, you now are able to identify a parent graph. You are able to tell the transformations that take place um, from like a given expression. And then you are able to evaluate using a table. You're, you're able to evaluate your functions.